Wherever I wander, wherever I rove, the hills of the highlands, forever I love. Farewell to the mountains, high covered with snow. Farewell to the strats and green valleys below. Farewell to the forests and wild hanging woods. Farewell to the torrents and loud pouring floods. My heart's in the highlands, my heart is not here. My heart's in the highlands, a chasing the deer. Chasing the wild deer and following the roe. My heart's in the highlands, wherever I go. Graham's, the family dairy, we are stepping up our home deliveries. Get fresh creamy milk in glass bottles, butter, cream and yogurts in time for breakfast. Delicious dairy from local farmers, produced by Graham's and delivered straight to your doorstep. Graham's, the family dairy. Check out our full range online.
the 2021 Springfield Scottish Squash Open. It's finals day today here at Inverness Tennis and Squash Club, and we've got two cracking matches coming your way. It's an all-English lineup in the women's event, with Grace Gear taking on Gina Kennedy in a few moments' time. And in the men's competition, Sebastian Bommelay will be taking on Welshman Amir Evans. Before we start, a massive shout out to our volunteers, officials and helpers who have all been absolutely outstanding this week. I think we can all agree that the food, catering and quality of officiating has been excellent. If you do fancy a snack, make sure you head upstairs where you can purchase edible squash and tennis balls. Yes, you heard me correctly. They cost five pounds and all proceeds go to the Highland Hospice. Also, a big final thanks to our headline partners, Springfield.co.uk and the rest of our partners and sponsors. Without them, none of this event would be possible. Now, on to today's action. It is time to welcome the players on court for the Scottish Springfield Squash Opens Women's Final. Up first, representing England and playing in her first PSA 10K Challenger Final, please welcome onto court number eight seed, Grace Gear. Up against Grace, we have another English woman. She's yet to drop a game all tournament and seated fourth in this year's Springfield Scottish Squash Open. Please welcome onto court, Gina Kennedy. Welcome to viewers tuning in on BBC Sports Scotland and BBC iPlayer. You're watching coverage of the Scottish Squash Open live from Inverness. And this is the first match, the women's final between Georgina Kennedy, the number four seed on the right hand side there in the black top against another English player, the number eight seed, Grace Gear. Number eight seed. These two have played each other before a couple of times. And it's Georgina Kennedy that has the, the two love advantage. Grace Gear, born in Welling Garden City, currently ranked 94 in the world, 23 years of age. She recently reached the semi-finals of the Squash Squared Open, one of the many challenger events that have been on in England and around Europe just after COVID opened up for the pandemic. And Georgina Kennedy, 58 in the world, 24 years of age, from London. She's so a Harvard graduate, and when she graduated, that was kind of the beginning of the pandemic. So her progress has been, been a bit difficult for her, although she's got a lot of wins in challenger events. 58 in the world. She's been on tour now for nine years but as I say a lot of that was at Harvard she did get a lot of squash there though and, and improved a lot as she was doing her education six PSA titles from eight finals and very impressive win rate so far 73.8 percent incredible athlete Gina Kennedy and there's Grace Gear in the blue top To say just slightly slightly younger at 23 years of age world ranking of 94 she's been on the, on the tour a little bit shorter just the five years four titles not managed to win one yet she's going to try and change that today pretty good win rate of nearly 60 percent well i'm simon park and joining me for both finals today is a semi-finalist of, of this event and 99 in the world Nick Wall, good afternoon, Nick. Good afternoon. How Hi, are you Parky. doing? Thanks for having me. You're welcome. How are you feeling after after yesterday? A great, w great tournament for you, by the way. Well done. And um, hard luck, the fact that you lost yesterday. Is your leg okay? My leg's okay. It's been a great tournament for me. Um, really happy to be here and playing. Um, just one match too many yesterday. A lot of physical battles this week. Um, but yeah. Happy with the week in general and looking forward to watching these two finals today. Yeah, there's uh, two fantastic games in, in prospect here. Georgina Kennedy, you'd have to say, would be 
the favourite in this match, but it's a great opportunity for Grace Gear to to have a go at her opponent. She's, as I said, she's lost to her twice before. They were both this year, but she's been very impressive in in this event, hasn't she? As well, Grace Gear. Yeah, I think uh, Grace is a dangerous player. She's got a lot of nice nice shots, good touch at the front. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how she approaches this match against Gina. Yeah, the Scottish Squash Open is has been played here at the Inverness Squash Club. It's been absolutely fantastic. The volunteers and all the club members have been so helpful to all the players and as commentators. Made us feel really welcome. Just a short break after the, the five minute knock up that the players are allowed just to go back to their bags and maybe have a sip of water. You might have half a banana. <laughs> I'm known, known for my banana eating. <laughs> Not quite 100 as you predicted the other day though. Not yeah, up to those numbers quite yet. You'd need uh, 400 apparently to, for it to be an overdose of potassium in one day. Gina Kennedy, the first, back onto court. Well, here we go. The first match of the day, the women's final between Georgina Kennedy and Grace Gear, an all English affair. It's a good sharp start from Kennedy, as you'd expect. What kind of tactics would you expect Grace Gear to be employing today against Kennedy? What would you do if, if, you, if you play Kennedy? I think Kennedy will be coming into this match using her physicality, as she does so well. She's an incredible athlete. Um, but if I was Grace, I'd be trying to utilise you know, the height. Don't let Gina dominate the middle of the court too much. Um, try to keep her on the move. Yeah, I think that's good advice. I think maybe um, a little bit of delay and hold as well against somebody like Kennedy, try, try and break up a movement. That's what uh, Georgia Adderley was doing really well yesterday. Obviously, couldn't do it quite well enough to be able to, to get the win, but she uh, she certainly caused problems for, for Kennedy. Kennedy won three love, but said afterwards that um, she felt like it was a five-setter. Yeah, I think uh, she's going to have to show physicality in this match if she wants to come out on top um, and show she's there for the, the long the long roll. Um. Well, we talk a lot, don't we, about um, Kennedy's physicality, but Grace Gear is certainly no slouch. She's a very fit player as well. Been impressed with her backhand this week. She's played quite a lot of winners on that side, been quite creative. She's got that, that lovely little um, flick cross court, a fade across across the, the court. Um, it's a really awkward shot to get back and I think she gets a lot of joy from that. So I wonder if we'll, we'll see that shot being used a lot today. Just a question of getting those opportunities and she's so far at just about zero. Kennedy being completely ruthless here, six love. There was a chance, but Kennedy showing her speed. Yeah, exemplary performance so far from Kennedy in this first. That's a really good squeeze, isn't it? Just keeping it so simple here, Kennedy. You can see by the look on her face how focused she is. Yeah, the line hitting in this in this match so far has been immaculate from uh, from Kennedy. Just putting Grace under so much pressure to to uh, 
to do anything proactive herself. She's always just that bit late onto the ball at the moment, isn't she, Grace Gear? Really like to see her get her first point on the board here. I'm sure, everybody would. Mm. She's sticking in well. To be fair to Grace, she just needs to keep going and maybe try and mix it up with a bit of height just to get Gina off the tee. She's controlling it very well here. That was a good straighten. Still the unbelievable speed, quick foot movement of Kennedy thwarted that attempted winner. Oh, she's just trying a bit too much, isn't she? Yeah, just a bit overstretched on that one. So 10 game balls now for Kennedy and the possibility of uh, a bagel, which I don't think we really want to see in the, in the first game, the first final here today. And we are going to. What a start for Gina Kennedy. Absolutely ruthless here. I think everyone's a bit stunned, including Grace Gear. She is going to improve, but she's just not been able to play so far in this match. Gina Kennedy it's been so focused from the very first point. 11 love in five minutes. Kennedy leads by one game to love. So Gina Kennedy leading one game to love, hasn't relinquished a single point yet in this final. Until now. Yeah, she played that drop shot a little bit deeper, I think. I don't think Gina was expecting it to come yeah. back that far. I thought there might be a bigger tri a cheer, actually, for that first point for, for Gear. Crowd's still a bit stunned. Kennedy came flying, flying out the blocks in that first game. It'd be interesting to see if she keeps this intensity up throughout this game as well. Well, I think she will. Um, I've seen her quite a, quite a lot in the, in the last year or so. She, she definitely will keep the intensity. It's just gear obviously needs to improve and she, and she can play a lot better. She's had a great week in this tournament, perhaps just a, a little bit of nerves in the first and just being, you know, just feeling that difference in level. Uh, in this final. Yeah, completely. Sometimes when you do win the first game comfortably, it can be quite hard to mentally stay stay, stay on it and and uh, not relax a little bit. I know, I know I'm guilty of that sometimes, but hopefully... What, relaxing on court? <laughs> <laughs> hopefully Gina's... Uh, she's got um, 
bit more concentration here, and it look, looks that way so far. Yeah, that's very true. I, I know that I've, in the past, um, won, it, won the first game quite easily and end, ended up losing the match. Can't see that happening today, but um, definitely want to see Gia getting back into it and playing her best squash. Just needs to try and reset a little bit here and, and get the basics going again towards the back and just get herself in front if she can play those shots when she's in a, in a bit of a stronger position. Georgina Kennedy has beaten the likes of Sarah Jane Perry in the last in the last year, and certainly frightened uh, a couple of the top ten players in the world. She hasn't had a chance to play uh, many international players so far. I'm sure, some of those top Egyptians and other nationalities will be looking at, at her a little bit nervously. Yeah, I'm sure when she gets those opportunities, there'll be a, a few worried players in the higher ranks for sure. It's good pressure from Kennedy, really good length hitting and width hitting. Making the court very big for Greer, uh, for gear, sorry. That's really positive, isn't it, from Kennedy? She's not just hitting the ball aimlessly. There's a lot of uh, intent on these shots. Just clipping the tin there, quite rare in this match. She's doing all the right things, Kennedy. Just like to see Gear hold the ball a little bit more. I know she's being she's being rushed, but there are one or two opportunities where she can she can just put a bit of delay on it. Yeah. It would Kennedy's such a good mover. Shot. And that was a bit more like it, wasn't it? Just um, a nice attacking, aggressive shot from the back of the court. More of a kill, that one, rather than a drop shot. Yeah, again, coming from the backhand side, which has been successful for her this week. I need a bit of top spin on that one. Side spin. Great too length good. Again. Yeah, too good. So, seven game balls now for Kennedy. Impressive stuff from her. Well, she tried something a little bit different there, and that's the kind of shot that has worked for Grace Gear earlier in the event against lesser players. You have to has to be said than than Kennedy. Again, look at the determination on Kennedy's face. She's not taking any prisoners, and quite rightly so. This is a final. So Kennedy takes the second game, 11-3 in six minutes. She leads by two games to love.
Well, Nick, I think we'd all like to see uh, a big improvement from from Grace Gear. Not to say that she's she's played badly. She's just not been allowed to play, has she? Yeah, she's not done done too much wrong here. Um, she's just been put under an awful amount of pressure from Gina. And like you say, if she can get a little bit more time and and hold hold the ball, stop Gina's movement, I think she'll she'll find a I few don't. more winners in this game. Yeah. This got a, she got a bit of a chance there, didn't she, off the boast to, to hold it, which she did, but then the shot wasn't good enough quality. Oh, that's good. That's really good anticipation from Grace Gear. She was all over that one. Great reactions. It's great width. You just know that she's going to buzz up to those balls and absolutely belt it. Yeah, it's the reward for getting such good length in the first place. She's made Grace hit. Quite a few back wall bows where she's had a lot of time at the front to do that. Gear definitely looks more more sprightly in this game. Digging her heels in a little bit. Yeah, I'd definitely like to see her win a few more points, get a little bit closer. She's certainly got the ability. Great shot. Yeah, it really was. It was a real teaser, wasn't it? One of those that you, as you move towards it, you think you're going to get it, and then right, right at the last second, you don't. So accurate. Those those last three shots from Kennedy. Pinpoint accuracy there. Where do you see Kennedy going? What is there anything that she? I mean, you can always improve, obviously. But is there anything you think she can improve on? If... <laughs> Well, that's a good sign. Tough for question. For Kennedy. Yeah, well, she's got most of the attributes, she, hasn't she? She hasn't looked troubled this week, and yeah, that's true. You no, know, she's been great to watch all week. I think um, a lot of the time when you're looking at improvement, it's usually when you're un under a bit more pressure. So, yeah, true. We might see that as she uh, starts to play the bigger events. She, she definitely does struggle a, a bit against players that that hold the ball really well. Um, and she has beaten Sarah Jane Perry, but also lost to her. Um, and I, I've commentated on a couple of those. And she, she found, obviously, the ones she lost, I think, were after she'd beaten Perry. Perry sort of got the hang of hang of it a little bit. It's often the best the best tactics you use against such a good move, isn't it? Because sure, you've got to stop them doing what they're so good at. And Break their rhythm. When she's flying around the court like she is here, it's almost impossible to stop when she's got gets going like this. Well, she hasn't dropped a game all week, Gina Kennedy, and she's only dropped four points here so far. Do you think there's a, l a little bit of fatigue in gear here today? Um, possibly a little bit, um, a little bit of nerves as well. Playing playing somebody like Gina, she'll be she would have been fully aware of her level before this this final. And then just, just sort of being outplayed, really. You know, it's it's a difficult one. Somebody like Gina is is the worst person to play because she just, when she's confident, she just steamrolls you. That was a lovely touch.
Yeah, we need to give credit there to Gear because she's not getting many opportunities. That trusty backhand. Oh, nice Another shot. One. Great shot from Grace Gear. It was slightly deceptive as well, wasn't it? Because she turned her shoulders as if she did as if to play cross court, yeah. That's a good cross court from that position. So seven match balls, seven championship balls, I should say, to Gina Kennedy. Been absolutely dominant in this, uh, well, the whole week and, uh, and in this final. Unfortunately for Grace Gear, who's not played badly, but just been totally nullified, really. Could have been a stroke there. Was that Gina Kennedy being a, a little bit kind? That's... Uh, that is a great win for the Kennedy the, the tournament. She is the 2021 Springfield Homes Scottish Open champion. Much deserved win there for her. She wins 11 love, 11 3, 11 3 in 21 minutes. A masterclass from, from Kennedy. Fully deserved. And we'll just hear a few words from the champion. I'm here courtside with the winner of this year's Women's Springfield Scottish Squash Open, Gina Kennedy. Gina, how does that feel? <laughs> yeah, it feels really good. Um, I've been excited for this tournament for a while. I've heard such great things about Inverness and about this club, and it's, this has probably been the best challenger event that I've played since tournaments resumed. Just the atmosphere has been great, all the streaming, the commentating, um, and just it's been organized perfectly. So I'm really happy to win this event, and yeah, hope, hope I'd love to come back again if it's on next year. Well, we'd absolutely love to have you again. And in, in terms of your performance uh, today and the kind of the whole competition, it was relentless. You didn't drop a game all competition. You must be buzzing with that. Yeah, really happy with my performance, especially today. I mean, Grace has had such a good tournament, knocking out all the seeds. Um, and I've played her a few times, and she's so dangerous. Like, her shot, if you give her a, a chance, she literally can put that ball away as good as anyone. So I was really focused on just trying to hit my targets. Um, and yeah, I knew that if I let up for even a second, like, she'll get off, uh, r rally up so many quick points. So really happy to get up in three. Yeah, definitely. And uh, in terms of... And um, what's next for you? So in Inverness this week, are, is that a busy schedule upcoming? Yeah, so I'm actually flying home tonight and then I'll be heading off to Philly uh, in America on Wednesday for the US Open. So that'll be my second platinum event. Um, so really looking forward to that. So it's a quick turnaround. <laughs> um, but yeah, this has been perfect prep for that, I think. So yeah, definitely. Well, best of luck for that one. And once again, congratulations. The winner of this year's Women's Springfield Scottish Squash Open. Our attention now turns to the men's event where Sebastian Bommelay will be taking on Amir Evans and that one's due to start just before four o'clock.
Wherever I wander, wherever I rove, the hills of the highlands, forever I love. Farewell to the mountains, high covered with snow. Farewell to the strats and green valleys below. Farewell to the forests and wild hanging woods. Farewell to the torrents and loud pouring floods. My heart's in the highlands, my heart is not here. My heart's in the highlands, a chasing the deer. Chasing the wild deer and following the roe. My heart's in the highlands, wherever I go. Family Dairy, we are stepping up our home deliveries. Get fresh creamy milk in glass bottles, butter, cream and yogurt in time for breakfast. Delicious dairy from local farmers, produced by Graham's and delivered straight to your doorstep. Graham's, the family dairy. Check out our full range online.
Wherever I wander, wherever I rove, the hills of the highlands, forever I love. Farewell to the mountains, high covered with snow. Farewell to the strats and green valleys below. Farewell to the forests and wild hanging woods. Farewell to the torrents and loud pouring floods. My heart's in the highlands, my heart is not here. My heart's in the highlands, a chasing the deer. Chasing the wild deer and following the roe. My heart's in the highlands, wherever I go.
Graham's, the family dairy, we are stepping up our home deliveries. Get fresh creamy milk in glass bottles, butter, cream and yogurt in time for breakfast. Delicious dairy from local farmers, produced by Graham's and delivered straight to your doorstep. Graham's, the family dairy. Check out our full range online.
Nearly to the final match of the competition. Just a quick reminder, there will be an official trophy presentation after the conclusion of the men's final, so make sure you stick around for that. Now, introducing the players for the men's final. Up first, he's been here since round two and only dropped one game so far. 
representing Wales and seated fifth in this year's competition. Please welcome onto court Amir Evans. <laughs> Up against Amir representing France and the number one seat in this year's Springfield Scottish Squash Open. Please welcome onto court Sebastian Bommelay. Welcome to viewers tuning in on BBC Sports Scotland and on BBC iPlayer. You are watching coverage of the Scottish Squash Open live from Inverness. This is the second final of the afternoon, the men's final. Georgina Kennedy coming through in three in the first one. This one is Wales v France. Sebastian Bommelay, the number one seed of France versus Emir Evans, the number five seed of Wales. Emir, Emir Evans on the right-hand side of the court at present. Currently 96 in the world, 24 years of age in the black shirt on the right-hand side. From Rill in Wales, he's coached by his father, Andrew, and also David Evans, the Welsh national coach. Came through Devred and Solniski in this tournament. Had a really, really good week. And his opponent on the left-hand side of the court on the backhand, Sebastian Bonmalay. Grey shirts and the grey shirt and white shorts. 58 in the world, 23 years of age. From St. Pierre in Reunion. Came through Pollen, Bertus and Nick Wall in the semi-finals. Well, talking of Nick Wall. I'm Simon Park, and joining me again for this uh, second final of the afternoon is Nick Wall. Good afternoon, Nick. Hi, Parky. Looking forward to a hopefully competitive battle between these two. Yeah, absolutely. You can see there that uh, Bommelay's been on the tour for five years and he's already got five titles to his name, which is pretty impressive from, from seven finals. He's obviously got in the winning habit. Pretty good win ratio as well from 142 matches over 60 percent been very impressed with him i haven't seen much of him before this event fantastic mover obviously a very light build and there we have emir evans 24 years of age no titles from ps from five psa finals obviously he's going to try to overturn that today also a similar win rate uh, to bomb 55.8 percent Six years on the tour. He's had a very, very impressive week, Evans. They have actually played once before, which was a couple of years ago in a tournament called the Linear Logistics Open in Calgary, the first round. And Emir Evans managed to win that 11-9 in the fifth. That's the only form these two have between them. So potentially we could have a long final on our hands. There's a real buzz around the club, Nick, isn't there here in M in Venice? Yeah, great atmosphere. There's been packed crowd all week, to be fair, but I think today everyone's looking forward to a great final here. Lots of local squash fans, good to see. Yeah, so many volunteers here as well who are obviously passionate about squash. All of them are players, all the, all the young juniors that have got the green shirts on and adults as well, all different levels. I think all the players this week are being very complimentary of how we've been treated and appreciative for all the help, including the volunteers. So the players have had their five minutes warm up. You get two and a half minutes on each side and then you spin the racket and it looks like Bommelay will be serving.
Well, Sebastian Bon Malay, the number one seed, has just uh, turned up in the commentary area and I've given him one of my bottles of water. So um, he obviously didn't have that uh, in his bag. Always happy to help. <laughs> Let's hope the, uh, the tactics uh, are better in place than his <laughs> hydration strategy, eh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what happened there. I mean, you, you never see a, a squash player without a, a bottle of a bottle of fluid, bottle of water, and a banana. That's all you need. Yeah, that's all you need to be on the, on the PSA first. World Tour. Well, here we go, the Springfield Scottish Squash Open 2021. The men's final is underway. Sebastian Bonmelay of France, the number one seed versus Emir Evans of Wales. Predictions, Nick? I'm going to go Bonmelay in four. OK. Just going to write that down. Expecting a few lengthy rallies at the start of this first game. The players settle into the match. It's a nice Lovely finish. finish. Yeah, really good. Really positive from, from Evans. Just just saw him um, a few minutes before the match and he looked very focused. Sure, he had plenty of um, hydration in his bag. Just describe Nick the sort of the, the different styles between the two and how you think they're they're going to employ the, the different tactics against each other. Yeah, sure. So Bomale is a great mover, so I think Evans will be looking to hold hold the ball, try and outmaneuver his opponent to find the winners. Um, whereas bommelay has got to try and keep it off Evans' racket because his, his racket ability is unbelievable at times. He's got great hands, finds it quite easy to finish rallies, I think. Talking of finishing rallies, that's the first winning point for Bommelay. Fantastic drive down the forehand side. Just finding the corner perfectly. Yeah, he's very solid on the volley, isn't he, Evans? Particularly that backhand volley. How much do you think that win a couple of years ago for Evans is going to play a part? I think it does mentally because like you say, the style's quite different and that can give you some confidence that your game works against this opponent. But at the same time, I think he'll be aware that obviously it was a couple of years ago. And, and it was very close. Yeah, it was very close. It's hard to know how certain players have improved through through the coronavirus. So I don't think he'll be thinking about that, that too much. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, if you if you're part of an association like like you are with England Squash, you, you you've been signed off to train pretty much through the the pandemic, haven't you? But at one point when it was proper lockdown, you you must have not had any any um, competitive matches. No, no matches, no time on court. Uh, I think everyone was in in the same boat, really. Yeah, um, had to force myself to go on a few runs. So I'm not a massive fan of running, so. <laughs> Few circuits in the park. How, how long? Did, how long did you ha actually have without hitting a squash ball? I'm not sure actually. I think it was 
was it two or three months? Okay. The initial, initially, I think. So not even you could even go and do a solo as a, an English Not player. initially, no. The, the second lockdown, I think a few fortunate players who, who like to say, work with England squash and other federations were able to go and hit the national centres, um, which was tough on the players that weren't, but... Yeah, just it's almost like a, an, an us and them, really, isn't it? But there's not a lot you could do about that situation. No, not really. I believe you uh, you went to work for your dad as well for a bit, which you, you really enjoyed. Oh, yeah. Loved, loved the factory <laughs> working. That was definitely not the highlight of the year. Made you appreciate your squash career, right? Yeah, especially coming to a tournament like this. It was a great finish there. Composed. Bombalay quite happy to throw in the boats and the drop shots uh, quite regularly, isn't he? Yeah, not afraid to take it in. He uses that bit of margin, so the risk reward is there. That's a great shot. Perfectly weighted. You just explain that a little bit more because there's there's a few player, a few viewers perhaps that uh, haven't seen squash before. What do you mean by risk re reward? So I think the way Bombalay takes the ball in the majority of the time isn't necessarily to hit outright winners. It's more to move his opponent out of position to then get on top of the rally and maybe counter punch his opponent off the next ball. Absolutely. And when, when we say take it in, we mean take it short. That's to the front of the court where the, the tin area is. And that's the, the time when you really have to motor. Might be a, that like there, like a big lunge and it's, it takes quite a lot out of you. That's a clever shot down the middle. He was trying to catch Bombalay out there with a shot down the middle of the court. Ah, oh, it's a wonderful nice. finish. That's the first one from Bombalay that's just been a, a bit more clinical, a bit more aggressive. The others, as you say, with the risk reward, it's just been a popping it in there, you know, fairly high above the tin. Yeah, I think when when you've got the angle there, you can you can take the ball in a little bit steeper and and go for that one. That a carry? It's hard to tell. Well, he was quick there, wasn't he, to get round Evans as well. That's a great shot. How fast was he onto that, Nick? Yeah, he read it like a book. And he yeah, executed the shot perfectly there. He's doing a good job of, of rushing Bobble at times here. Just taking him out of his rhythm. Yeah, he's a good striker of the ball, isn't he, Evans? And he, he's doing it a very solid way. That was a good drop shot from the back of the court, that forehand. He's just going for a bit of disguise, and sometimes that, that can affect the, the shot. So nothing between these two so far. Could be a long one, this, Nick. 
could be, as we've seen from the previous matchup these two have had. Not afraid to take it all the way. In your match with uh, with Bombalo yesterday in the semi-finals, where did you feel that you things worked for you against him tactically? You obviously you pushed him pretty close. Yeah, I feel like you've uh, you need to be in front of him. You need to try and game game behind you, and then I actually I feel felt like the the lift worked quite well against him. Um, he, he seemed a, a tiny bit uncomfortable up there when you, when you put it up high. So I think Evans may be able to use that today. He, d he does try and take it in from that high position. It, it does leave him loose occasionally. Goes for something that's maybe perhaps not quite on. Yeah, it's n you don't want to leave it loose against Evans. Like you say, he's got great ball striking and racket ability, so he's definitely got to keep it off his racket where he can. There's the lift you were talking about, the lob, and again. That's again that shot. Played a winner there earlier on in this first game on the volley. Nice control on that backhand. You like the backhand volley drop, don't you, as well? Especially yeah, the cross-court one. Cutting round the ball there like, like he did, and it stayed very short because of that. Oh, he's got it. Ferocious pace rally. It is quick fire stuff here. Both players moving tremendously well. Evans making a push here. Yeah, just trying really hard to reduce this deficit. Just so good at, at soaking up, isn't he, Bomale? He keep, is. Keeps yeah. himself in there. It doesn't seem to be doing much, does he? Sometimes. I mean, you've, obviously you played him yesterday. Often you feel like you're on top of him and you're controlling the rallies. You sometimes feel like you, you you're playing the better squash almost, but he just sticks in, sticks in his movement, gets the ball back, makes you win the rally three times. He's like a sponge, isn't he? So absorbent. I mean, one one great player that uh, that I used to play against a lot, Jan Shakan, was like that. You know, he was. I mean, obviously he had some great shots as well, but he he just absorbed everything. Didn't didn't always feel like he was doing much. A bit like Bombele. Well, he puts the pressure on you to win the rally, then, doesn't it? Yeah. That's a lovely trickle bows from Bombele. Good quality match this final. Quite evenly matched. That's good left and back inside. Get the ball nice and high, so the opponent has to reach up. Yeah, just changing the paces up here. Going from very fast pace to giving himself a bit of time to reset. 
Yeah, it's good squash. Good squash from Bombalay. Well, both players, but Bombalay was the, the one who was able to find that opening. And French number one seed has four game balls in this first game. This looks like he's going for a walk in the park, doesn't he? Look, looking very relaxed. <laughs> Doesn't show too much emotion on court, that's for sure. That's tight, that's a good squeeze from Evans. One game ball saved there. Always fading him away from, from Bommelay there, wasn't it? Yeah, it's impressive, that one. And another one. Oh, I think I might have hit someone's head up there. <laughs> it's uh, a little bit dark for us to see up the, at the top there in that cubby hole, but um, an apology from Bob Malay. Just clip the cameraman, maybe. Here we go. No, I still couldn't see. <laughs> <laughs> so two now. Two game balls for Bob Malay. Be careful here, Evans. Any slightly loose one, and Pomelay could get a stroke. Well, this is interesting. Yeah, try try to get the the quick one. Yeah, just a bit of loss of focus from from Bombalay. Evans will be really buoyed by that. It's, it's good mentally. Sticks in all the time. You know, gives it everything. And another there, one. There you go. It's well, well stuck in from Evans. Really well towards the end of this game. You heard that huge Welsh roar from him. He's got himself into a tiebreak situation in this first. ball from, I was just going to say, has to be so good from Evans for Bommelay not to be able to retrieve it. Puts a lot of pressure on mentally. Played really well in that rally, Evans. He did. Worked the ball around really well. Just not expecting it to come back all the time and like you say, tough mentally to stay proactive when it's like that. easy to get frustrated and Went for it. Chance here for Bombalay. Oh, it's a great shot. Great shot. Forced. 
Evans into that back right corner, who's stretching. And you can see great replay here. Couldn't quite get himself still, and that was a very, very good quality finish for Mbombele. He's 10 6 up in this game, so he'll be kicking himself a little bit. There you see him shaking his head. He's wasted uh, a bit of energy, but he's still got the, the right result from his point of view. Taking the first game 12 10 in 20 minutes. He leads by one game to love. So a bit of extra work for Bon Malay in that first game, but he managed to get the, the job done. Gave Emir Evans a, a bit of a sniff, or more than a sniff, in that first with the tie break occurring. Evans has got to hope for a few more errors like that from Bon Malay, I think. Perhaps that's a bit of a hangover from the, the extra work that was put in in the, in the first, physically and mentally, for Bon Malay. And this is where we need a, a big response and maybe a better start from, from Evans. Well, he did actually start quite well, but to continue the to con continue the form all the way through the game. As we said though earlier, Evans does have that good memory of, of winning against Bombalé in their only meeting in Calgary. And even if you are one left down, that uh, definitely does help. Got that belief. It's a great touch. Great touch, definitely two bounces. Happily admitting that that was down, I think. Well, even I could see that with my old eyes. rally this one intense isn't it lots of pace 
He's got the reward for it there. Have you seen Bon Malay against any of the, the top players? I know, I know he did play um, Gawad fairly recently in Chicago. But I, I haven't, no I, ha no. I haven't actually seen him play before before I played him yesterday. At all? No. Against anyone else? Not yes. even seen him at this, this tournament. He's got to be um, hopeful for the for the French team, hasn't he? You think? Yeah, uh, he's only 23. Yeah, all right. A lot of time on his hands. He's got a, a solid ranking of 58 right now. Something about the French players, all such good movers, aren't they? Every single one. Yeah, they really are, both the men's and the, on the women's side as well. There's no bad movers in French squash. Maybe maybe lower down in some of the clubs. But the Welsh <laughs> Welsh aren't too bad themselves. Yeah. The likes of Joel Macon. I always see Welsh players as often quite quite good with the racket though when you think back to Adrian Davies, Alex Goff, David Evans. Evans, Emir Evans isn't Emir too bad Evans himself. Certainly got some some good racket skills. And then on the women's side of course Tesney. Sure, Tesney will be tuning in, supporting a brother. Oh, that's that was a lovely great shot. shot. Yeah, it was fantastic. He just <clears throat> ran it around the walls. He picks his moments to actually take it in a little bit lower, doesn't he? Maybe with a bit more, a bit more pace. I think that's the key in this match for both players. Outmaneuver each other and, and pick and choose the right chances to take in. We saw Bommelay at the end of the last game maybe choosing to take a few in that, that weren't necessarily on. And it cost him a few points, but managed to close out the game. Evans frustrated with that one. Bommelay will be very happy to see a few errors creeping in from Evans. Just extending his lead in this second game. He's very much in the zone, isn't he? Look, you can tell by the way he goes about his business that he uh, finds it quite easy to get into a good, a good zone of, of concentration and focus. Seems like that kind of character is difficult to break. Yeah. Cool, calm and collected. Much like yourself, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to be. The refs might disagree sometimes. <laughs> yeah, 
being chilled doesn't mean that you're not uh, ultra competitive. Yeah, I think that's the right decision there. Off yeah, the back sure. wall. Maybe a little bit of space to go around. Yeah, it was a close one. It was a loose shot, wasn't it? But um, perhaps he wasn't quite in position for the stroke. Such a difficult sport to referee, isn't it? Much like football, you know, it's really, really subjective. Apart from the fact that football referees have to actually run around the pitch for 90 minutes. Can't imagine, can't imagine some of the, uh, the squash referees running around with these guys. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> but nevertheless, it is very hard, hard to referee. A bit of a thankless task as well. So we'll, we'll get that thank you in now for all the referees yeah. that have uh, worked I, hard this week. I actually thought the, the Scottish referee doing, doing this one was Caleb from Clarkson's Farm. Have you seen <laughs> that? <laughs> I didn't actually, I didn't actually get to uh, see the referee. Definitely a good, good look alike. <laughs> I've not actually seen that, Prem. You'll have to show me a, show me a picture. Good lead for Bonmelay here. Another good cushion. Just seems to do it without too much fuss. Great oh, shot. Wonderful finish. Sort of fanning it a little bit, using the wrist and taking it to the side. Clever shot that from Just Evans. Rolled the racket. Deceptive, isn't it? Very, especially playing it at the pace he did there. Almost could have been a drive as well. I bet you can do that shot. Not sure about the forehand. I think <laughs> I like maybe I like the that end. one on the back end. Need to work on my uh, wrist flexibility for that one. Ooh. That uh, was difficult. Uh, full stretch there for Emir Evans. Another wicked boast from the Frenchman. It's given him five game balls to take a two-love lead here. It's a tough finish there for, for Evans. Absolutely furious with that. Just a little bit fortunate in the in the back of the court, but Bonmelay still looking as, as casual as ever, playing some fantastic squash, really frustrating the Welshman. As Bonmelay takes the second game, 11-5 in 12 minutes, he leads by two games to love.
So two love to the number one seed, Sebastian Bommelet. He's really been a crowd favourite this week and a bit of a commentator's favourite. He's been very impressive, considering a lot of us haven't, haven't seen much of him, considering his ranking. You hadn't seen him before you, before this week. So, well, that might be something to do with, see the nature of the last um, couple of years with the pandemic as well. Yeah, he's been very impressive all week. Stuck to the task. Not shown many weaknesses. Evans has got a task to try and find some in this match. It's a good lift. A very underrated shot. The backhand lob straight down the backhand. Tight to the wall. Or left, left side, I should say, because you're a lefty. It's not, not your backhand, is it? Not, not everybody's. <laughs> Just there's a few weird ones. What do you think there, Nick? I mean, he did kind of try and get his racket around him quite yeah, early, didn't he? Uh, the, the refs just said it there. I think he feels that he was maybe looking for the player a little bit there. The ball... Uh, Would I you have done the same? I think he's taken the right line to the ball. It's maybe just showing that he wants to play it rather than, than taking, taking the man there. Like you say, different different referees interpret that differently. Raw from Evans, trying to fire himself up to get back into this match. What do you think Evans needs to needs to change or, or tweak a little bit? Obviously, he's finding himself too low down here. He's not played badly. He's not sure. played badly. He's started both games really well, positively. He's moving the ball around well. Sort of when it's got to that middle stage in the game that he has maybe hit a few errors or just stepped off the intensity a tiny bit, which makes a huge difference at this level. Absolutely. So I think it's just when he gets to that mid stage, it might be five all just putting the foot on the gas, keeping the pressure on and taking the opportunities when, when they come. Like that. It's great shot. Yeah, it's pretty impressive from, from Evans. As I said, he is a, he's a fantastic volleyer. Give him any time around the middle of the court and you're in trouble. Both using a lot of cross courts here, aren't they, Parky? They are. It's quite uh, it's quite open, but I mean, I've heard that the the front wall is is quite quick on this court. It's quite bouncy and yeah, it fizzes through quite well. Been a really nice court to play on. Fast, but rewards good shots. Does it suit you? Do you think your game? Yeah, it suits my game. I like to play at high pace, which is useful on a fast front wall, and then take the ball in when, when the opportunities are there. Well, if it doesn't suit your game, you did pretty well reaching the semis. Bommelé doing a really good job of stretching the court out there, using those corners, hitting his targets really well. Oh, casual. 
It was, and, it, and it, you could see that he wasn't trying to knock the spots off the ball there. It just the weight of stroke was perfect. Wicked angle there, wicked boast from Evans. Really pushing Bonmelay forward. Just moves with such ease, though. That's the problem. He's so light, isn't he, Bombalo? Just floats around the court, doesn't he? He's obviously very strong as well, but... Power to weight. Yeah, absolutely. The key in, in squash, I think. Good lift under pressure there from Evans. Oh, That's beautiful. It's great squash. Much deserved fist pump there. Just uh, drying his fingers and hand a little bit on this court. So it can fit, doesn't the racket grip doesn't slip. It's very uh, hot on here. He's certainly got some fantastic feel, especially around the front of the court on the late when he needs to. Slots it in a bit more aggressively. It's a great shot. Made a couple of errors from that sort of area under pressure, Bombele, when he's having to go from the right hand side of the court to the left into his backhand. He's managed to knock the ball out of court a couple of times. That could yeah. be an area to to press. Evans taking the ball really early there, while Bombele is unsettled and out of position, finding a lot of reward. get that's a really good line from Bombele sending Evans scurrying into the back left such a hard movement that diagonal across there isn't it turning on back on yourself yeah it's brutal Soft that one, I feel, Nick. Let's have a look. He didn't really do much, did he? No, the ball looked quite short there. Yeah. Maybe could have gone in front to play that, but a little bit soft. The ref feeling it was a stroke. Definitely popped off the ball quite quick, didn't he, Bomale? He was he was back and almost on the tee, I felt, but. We move on. Six all in this third game. On the late with a two love lead. Still on for the possibility of the, the Nick Wall prediction, which was uh, a bon Malay win in four. Uh, it's pretty impressive the way he was able to turn onto the backhand side there and still have the control with such speed. And even then the ball wasn't particularly low, but it was had a lot of spin on it and it found its target. Yeah, it's impressive. Evans needs to make a push here.
That's a lovely shot. There's the fist pump. You don't see much emotion from this talented Frenchman, but uh, he knows when he when he wins key points. He loves that soft, soft little boast there, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. It's lovely to watch. Probably not too great for, for Evans. Another great whip there from Bombele. It's really, really impressive stuff from him. He's finding his targets in all four corners. So a three-point cushion. Just maintaining his focus. Emir Evans has been playing his part here. He's certainly not played badly by any stretch. Championship ball for Bommelay here. Well, it has to be one saved, yep. Stroke to Evans. Down to three championship balls now for Bommelay. the first outburst of emotion there you can see for Sebastian Bommelet. Much deserved there for the French number one seed. He, he proved that he was worthy of a number one seed. Played incredibly well during the whole week. And this he saved for his best performance this final. 12-10, 11-5, 11-7 in 49 minutes. Very impressive. Bommelet is the Scottish Open champion 2021. Yeah, lots of kudos to Emir Evans. Well done to him for reaching the final. He played his part, but uh, just a bit too much quality from the Frenchman today. I'm courtside with the winner of this year's Springfield Scottish Squash Open, Sebastian Bommelé. Sebastian, you must be absolutely delighted with that. Yeah, I'm very happy and released. 
because uh, winning a tournament is always difficult, and uh, it's, mis it's my sixth title now, and I'm, uh, I'm very happy. Yeah, and you mentioned yesterday you played Amir Evans one time before, and he beat you. Was this a perfect way of getting revenge? Yeah, of course, because uh, last time I lost, so here winning three love, it's, uh, it's good for me. And in terms of um, your career, you said six titles already. Um, what's the next event for you? I'm going to the US Open uh, on uh, Tuesday, actually. I'm going there, so that's my next tournament. So will you have any time to c celebrate this evening, or is it very much uh, focused on the next event? No, I don't have the time to celebrate. I'm just uh, going to focus on the US Open, and uh, that's it. Cool. Well, Sebastian, thanks again for talking to us. Best of luck for the next event. And I'll let you get a drink before the official awards presentation. But well done. Sebastian Bommelé, everybody. Make sure you stay with us because we'll have the official awards ceremony coming up in just a few moments' time. Well, what a day. Fantastic uh, couple of finals here. Just a little bit one-sided, though, in, in the women's. Gina Kennedy in fantastic form. Grace Gear. Gear to be congratulated to for a great week, but just not up to the levels of, of Kennedy in this final. Wonderful, wonderful week though for, for both girls. Been real crowd favorites, these two. Always give it absolutely everything. There's the smile of a winner. Gina Kennedy, the Scottish Open champion, 2021. And there's, there's another winner, Sebastian Bommelay, the winner on the men's side, the Scottish Open champion. Fantastic performances from him. Saved the best to last against the very informed Welshman, Emir Evans. Very impressed with this relaxed and chilled out Frenchman. I think he's going to have a, a fantastic career and good luck to him at the US Open. here at Inverness Tennis and Squash Club. But now it's time for the official awards presentation. To present the award, I'm delighted to be joined with on court by Chief Executive of Scottish Squash, Maggie Still. <laughs> and alongside Maggie, we are delighted to have our headline partners for the day, Springfield's property here today. And we're delighted to be joined by Executive Chairman of Springfield Properties, Sandy Adam and his wife, Anne Adam. I would now like to invite Maggie Still to say a few words on behalf of Scottish Squash. Thanks, very, thank you very much. We, we've got a few people that we'd like to thank um, before we start the proceedings today and the presentations. I mean, first of all, it's got to be the players, really, hasn't it? What, what a fantastic demonstration of squash we've had today. It's just been absolutely superb. So thank you for the, to the players and also to you guys for coming and watching them and making it a fantastic afternoon. Show your appreciation, please. So I'd also like to thank the sponsors, Sandy and Anne. Um, Springfield Properties have funded this event, sponsored us really well for the second year here today. Uh, we're really grateful to, to Springfield because through the company and through the charity, they actually underpin 
a great deal of the squash pathway in Scotland. So they fund young people's programs, they fund athletes, and they fund events. So we are very grateful to them for their support. Thank you very much. So when Sandy first met the events, he spoke about a vision for the Springfield Scottish Squash Open. And it is a little bit like the pyramids and Egypt, where we have the glass court in an iconic venue in Scotland. We're still on that path to want to put that on. And we're really working ever so hard. And that was Sandy's vision along with the players. So he really is a great supporter of Scottish squash. We've got a couple of new um, supporters as well along the way today. You'll see the tins. We've got um, many new partners. l &E are a new partner for us, and we're grateful for their support. But also, we've had funding from Event Scotland, which has been superb because we've been able to stream the event in a very professional way and get ourselves onto BBC TV, which I think is really a step forward for squash. Uh, just superb. I know the players have mentioned it and appreciated it, so that's been a real step forward for us. In terms of putting this event on today, though, I mean, the club and Heise and Inverness Club have been absolutely superb. Look at those T-shirts, the volunteers everywhere. You have been fantastic. Our referees here today have worked superb throughout, throughout the week, actually. So we've got Jim, Maureen, Stefan, Andy. You've just worked like I've never seen before. So thank you very much for, the, for your work there today, this week. Um, and I couldn't start by <laughs> without thanking my team at Scottish Squash. I, I feel like I've not done an awful lot this week, and that's largely because, uh, and uh, Alan, where is Alan? He, is he hiding? There he is at the back there. Alan Mackay uh, has led a team of, um, of staff that have just made this so good. So thank you very much, Alan, for everybody who's helped here. You've done a fantastic job. And that's it from me. So a big round of applause for everybody who's worked so hard. Thanks very much, Maggie. Brilliantly said. I think you touched on a lot of really important things there. Thank you, all the sponsors, and obviously all the uh, staff and volunteers here at Inverness Tennis and Squash Club. I'd like to bring in Sandy um, as a headline partner. I just wanted to hear kind of your thoughts on uh, the competition so far and how much you've enjoyed being a, a partner of the Springfield Scottish Squash Open. Well, it's been a great event here in Inverness. When, it, when uh, I approached Maggie a couple of years back uh, about sponsorship, uh, I was very keen on two things. Uh, firstly, that um, the Scottish Squash Open should travel around Scotland and not just be based in Edinburgh or the Central Belt. So it's absolutely fantastic to see it up north here in, in Inverness, although it would have been slightly better if it was in Elgin, of course. But you can't have everything. Inverness is, is, is great. So, um, and the second thing I was keen to do was uh, to make it equal with uh, men and women. So um, the prize money is split equally. And you'll see the two, tr the two trophies are the same size as well. So uh, um, it's, gr it's great that that's happened as well. Yeah, definitely. And the trophies are absolutely massive. Um, I wouldn't be able to hold that myself. But um, in terms of the week itself, there's obviously been some great squash on show from both the men's and women's competition. What's been your, your highlight for the week? I think um, uh, Georgia Adderley has played fantastic this week. Um, Unfortunately, she came up against a very strong opponent in the, in the semi-finals and wasn't able to make the final, but uh, she played superbly well, and it's great to see her moving up the rankings as, as well. Yeah, definitely, and I'm going to put you on the spot here, and obviously a, a title partner for the competition this year. Is it something that you'd maybe potentially consider in future years down the line? Absolutely, yeah. We're, we're committed to working with Scottish Quash uh, uh, for a few years yet, so... Uh, um, we, want to, we want to make this vision come true of, of uh, an all-glass courts um, uh, Springfield Scottish Squash uh, final somewhere, um, in, somewhere in Scotland. Well, it's been absolutely brilliant having you and a massive thanks for, for all your help and support. It, it is now time to turn our attention to the official presentations and we're starting with the women's final. There's been some great games so far in the women's competition with a lot of the games going all the way to five. 
but it was one step too far for this year's runner-up. Please welcome onto court, Grace Gear. Now, a warm, warm welcome is well and truly deserved for an opponent, a player, a competitor who did not drop a set or game all competition. Please welcome this year's women's winner of the Springfield Scottish Squash Open, Gina Kennedy. Gina, I'll let you have your, your photo there. Um, I, I was wanting to grab a quick word as well. First of all, how is it to hold that trophy? Because it's absolutely massive. Yeah, oh, sorry, thank you. Yeah, just, this is like the biggest trophy I've ever seen. <laughs> I love it, topped off with a little bit of uh, dinosaur as well, so. I, I think it's actually Nessie, but. <laughs> it's Nessie. It's Nessie, actually. <laughs> You're learning, it's okay. Um, in, terms, in terms of the the week itself, would you say in your performance you kind of got better as the week went on? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I got used to the court a bit more and the conditions. It's quite hot on this court. I know a few players have mentioned that before. Um, so yeah, I was just really happy with my performance throughout the week and especially in the final. Um, yeah, like I said, Grace has had such a good event, so really well done to her. It's always tough playing her, so I was really happy, happy with that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I know you said that you're um, away off to America um, in a couple of days' time. I was going to ask about uh, the future as well. And uh, is Birmingham 22 very much on the radar? And is that kind of the, the dream for the next 12 months? Yeah, that's definitely been a goal of mine since I graduated from uni. Um, I'm really, yeah, I've England squash. Um, there's a, a strong team in England, so it's going to be difficult to get a place. But that's definitely my goal. So I'd absolutely love to be there. Maybe playing doubles against uh, Scotland. So that'll always that'll always be an exciting one. Um, but yeah, just want to say just quickly, really big thank you to everyone. I want to echo what was already said before. Um, it's been such a great event and thank you so much to the sponsors for putting this on because, yeah, without Springfield Properties, we really, really appreciate it. So, thank you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Absolutely really well said. Thanks a lot, Gina. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this year's Women's Springfield Scottish Squash Open, Gina Kennedy. Moving on to the men's event presentation now. And again, there was loads of really, really close games throughout the week here at Inverness Tennis and Squash Club. But unfortunately, it was one step too far for this year's runner-up, Amir Evans. And finally, please welcome onto court a big round of applause for this year's winner of the men's Springfield Scottish Squash Open, Sebastian Bommelay. Sebastian, I know we've just spoken to you very briefly, um, but I was just wanting to ask you about uh, a little bit about the competition as a whole and how much you've enjoyed it here uh, in Inverness. Uh, it's a very nice club and I uh, really enjoyed the city. You know, I was staying in the Airbnb in downtown and uh, it's really nice. It's a pretty city and uh, everyone is cool and uh, that's it. I love it. And, and the main question that everyone has got on their lips, I know, is will you come back next year to defend your crown? Uh, maybe I'll come back. It depends if uh, I've grown up on the ranking or not. You know, I hope to be more in the platinum and uh, fight for the big titles. But uh, if I'm still uh, here, I will come for sure. Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll hold you to account for that. And finally, just on your performance throughout the week, 
Um, I asked Gina if it was the same thing. Was it a case that you felt you got better through the week or did you kind of just keep your standards so high throughout? No, every match uh, I was playing a little bit better and uh, you know, I was more released every time, every time. So I was more confident after every match and uh, that's good for the future. Well, well done uh, today and obviously across the whole week. We've absolutely loved watching you play. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this year's Springfield Scottish Squash Open in the men's event, Sebastian Bommelay. And that is just about that from us here at Inverness Tennis and Squash Club. Over the last five days, we've been treated to 44 matches. But in the end, it was Gina Kennedy and Sebastian Bommelay who led the way. Thank you all who came to watch the, the squash here and everybody watching at home on BBC Online. We'll see you next time. Well, what a fantastic week of squash we've had here at the Springfield Scottish Open here at Inverness. There you can see Georgina Kennedy with her winner's trophy and uh, the Loch Ness Monster in there, not a dinosaur, which is quite amusing. Maybe see a few more clips of uh, the women's final, which unfortunately for Grace Gear was uh, a little bit one-sided this time. Gina Kennedy, everyone knows, has been playing some incredible squash. She's uh, pretty close to top 10 in the world in, in terms of her level just hasn't managed to be, be able to get her ranking up quick enough due to the, obviously the pandemic. And there's Sebastian Bommelay, the French number one seed who managed to win the title. Now you see what it means to him. He's going to have a great career ahead of him. He's got the US Open next week. It'll be interesting to watch to see who he gets in the, the first round. Emir Evans played his part, also had a, a great week, but just couldn't quite match up to to Bommelay today, he saved his best till last, a deserved champion. And there we have the two winners, Georgina Kennedy and Sebastian Bommelay, the Scottish Open champions 2021. Thanks very much for joining us and hopefully we'll see you next year. <laughs>